Hey everybody, it's Narrative Tara. What a difference just wiping the FN camera looks. Cause I was like, why is it so like weird? But anyway, all right, cool. So if you haven't seen my other videos about my like Uranus kind of transits, you should. Um, but it's just basically me reflecting on my life. If you don't know, I've been seeing in a few videos how um, I'm entering a new five-year cycle, and so, man, my neck hurts. Um, a new five-year cycle, and so I'm taking stock, and then I'm slowly getting more and more into astrology because it's just kind of interesting to get into. So I'm noticing that Uranus is progressing through, I was going to say Pisces, <laughs> no, it's 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 done that already um it's progressing through taurus and the reason why i am making a note of it in my mind is because my natal venus is in taurus halfway through the house and so it's uranus is only like a quarter of the way into that it's gonna you know by the end of the year it'll only be at like maybe like 10 or 12 degrees maybe maybe um but you know <sighs> whatever but I'm feeling the I'm feeling the energy already like pop up and I'm making some like mental decisions and like it's mercury retrograde which isn't too hard for me even though like all that shit in like Aquarius really was not cool like that shit was not cool at all and I think a few people are still dealing with that anyway it's Pisces season I made it through that fucking portal and and just moving on to different things and had a few realizations and I just am just fucking happy that things are getting better but like I'm thinking about a lot of stuff that I want to do with my life and there's just some transits mainly this Uranus one that's like well Uranus Saturn and Pluto those are the transits that I'm kind of really thinking about now so I'm gonna do videos on astrology as I see them um, and so a lot of the reflections are from my own chart so I'm giving you ideas and things like that but like don't take that as like fixed information just because I'm not an astrologer yet um, so yeah I'm just giving you perspectives and stuff like that but one of the perspectives that I wanted to give is from someone who has a 12th house Leo moon and moon square venus and then moon square pluto and so um this uranus aspect is kind of like changing up my whole kind of like emotional space but also how i relate to beauty and how i relate to what i perceive as beautiful so one of the things that you may have if you have a squared or even opposing moon is like this conflict with the idea of beauty and I'm specifically talking about like things opposing like Taurus or squaring Taurus squaring Uranus right so squaring could be the sign the planet is in Leo the planet is Aquarius and then opposing the, the planet is in um, Scorpio so one of the things to think about is kind of like beauty and like all that Taurus kind of represents like many things like that and how judgment of other people based on that can come about and judgment based on like shame and guilt and jealousy can come about like because the stuff that I want to do now like the people that do it like if I were younger I would have been like ew like those kind of people were like mm, mm you know and so it's kind of like eating crow now because it's like I'm going in that direction but it's kind of like one of those things where it's like in entering an industry in a field that like prides itself on the stuff that I have personally been like very insecure about and so it could be anything for you guys but 
Taurus and Libra, but like especially Taurus deals with things related to like money, aesthetics, beauty, um, things that make you comfortable, luxury and stuff like that. And I think when you have struggles accepting that, struggles accepting that, familial patterns that struggle with that, insecurities, self issues, self doubt poor image, things like that, it becomes really hard to overcome what that kind of stuff represents. And one of the things that really is linked to it is like shame and then shame that turns into judgment of the other when really the judgment is on yourself for not feeling like you can be integrated into what the other represents, right? So for people that are more comfortable with like their body or their job or whatever like when you feel conflict about that then it's very easy to put out on other people that they're somehow vain greedy materialistic and that can be true like you can actually accurately ex assess that but one thing that squares and oppositions kind of teach you is to not judge people based on that one don't judge them based on their financial economic beauty status to kind of check that to look underneath the surface but then to also not have such issues with yourself that you cannot appreciate what beauty is and you can't appreciate what um yeah you can't appreciate what beauty is you can't appreciate something that is beautiful someone that is beautiful without interjecting your own sort of insecurities onto that and that's something that excuse me i kind of realize it's like also not allowing yourself to be beautiful or feel beautiful against whatever societal standard it is whatever you see as beauty the highest calling of beauty the highest standard of beauty is within yourself taking care of yourself self-care and stuff like that is really important man it's hot i mean god I'm sorry i like drink coffee but damn it's like god damn all right but that is something to note another thing with this that i am starting to appreciate and this is um, dealing with Pluto. Okay, let me go back. Pluto, not Pluto, Aquarius. This Uranus and Aquarius. Let me just go ahead and highlight that. Uranus and Aquarius, the way I see it is appreciating the process of beauty. Appreciating the process of something that can be beautiful. And I was watching a few videos on this. And one lady was saying, she's a, like, she does like astrology and tarot and stuff like that. One person was saying that, like, perhaps in the age of Aquarius, that things that we consider more esoteric are perhaps scientific. And I do see that happening. But it seems like the esoteric is kind of, like, ahead. And I don't know if that's, like, a Piscean consciousness. Like, it's already ahead, right? It's already at the last stage. And we're just catching up. I'll have to do more on consciousness and pursuits and projects that you put out there how it's old consciousness and how that could possibly be uh hard for people to grasp I said this before in another video but uh oh it may not be as esoteric or spiritual as it is scientific and so another thing that i want to note is that when it comes to beauty or aesthetics or something like that that's considered perhaps frivolous take a note at the scientific or the yeah like the scientific the engineering the wh whatever the hard sciences are take a look at how they play a part into the idea of aesthetics of beauty of societal beauty societal value things like that because one thing that i notice is that even though the fields that i want to go into are pretty like frivolous on the surface there's actually quite a bit of like science that you need to know like it actually is quite rigorous you may not be like a doctor out of it or an engineer out of it
but you definitely need to know scientific stuff and also I just wrapped up a class well not wrapped it up but the class was today and um, we were talking about uh, the what is it the rule of three and then golden spiral like golden ratio and stuff like that that is quite scientific but it's found in nature you know what I'm saying like so I think appreciating beauty for beauty and how it is processed like everything that is beautiful that we consider beautiful everything has a process and particularly in the natural world there is a certain process that happens that is quite scientific you know what I'm saying as far as like things growing out of the ground how does that work like that stuff has scientific basis even if you consider it quite frivolous even like printing out tarot cards like that can be scientific how your body interprets color how your body interprets shape how your body interprets like the fact that this is a what is it two-dimensional kind of thing three-dimensional box stuff like that like really appreciating your like world your 3d world or all of the d's i guess that make up <clears throat> make up the items and even appreciating i guess the scientific way that you process things in your body that produces chemicals that help you with your emotional state to help you create like that stuff needs to be appreciated. I've said this in, I think, the Mars video. So check that out if you want to. The Mars video, like, appreciating what your body can actually do. Learning about the body so that you can appreciate what your body can actually do is very important at this time. I think there's intellectualization about it. And then Piscean, you'll be able to, like, really feel into it. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. I think I'll do that later. Now, for... Hmm. Should I do this in another video? I think I might do it in another video. So that's all I'm going to say for this one. And um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.